Welcome once again. In this session, we are reading 2 Peter chapter 1. Now, 2 Peter is one of the most important books you could read. There is a passage in this book, and we will get to it, that is the most misunderstood, misinterpreted, and overlooked passages of the entire scope of Scripture. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained a like precious faith with us in the righteousness of our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace be multiplied in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, seeing that his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and virtue, by which he has granted to us his precious and exceedingly great promises, that through these you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world by lust. Yes, and for this very cause, adding on your part all diligence, in your faith supply moral excellence, and in moral excellence knowledge, and in knowledge self-control, and in self-control perseverance, and in perseverance, godliness, and in godliness, brotherly affection, and in brotherly affection, love. For if these things are yours and abound, they make you to not be idle or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is blind, seeing only what is near, having forgotten the cleansing from his old sins. Therefore, brothers, be more diligent to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For thus you will be richly supplied with the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Therefore, I will not be negligent to remind you of these things. Though you know them and are established in the present truth, I think it right as long as I am in this tent when he says, as long as I am in this tent, he's talking about in this physical body. Verse 13, I think it right, as long as I am in this tent, to stir you up by reminding you, knowing that the putting off of my tent comes swiftly. In other words, death. Even as our Lord Jesus Christ made it clear to me, yes, I will make every effort that you may always be able to remember these things, even after my departure. For we didn't follow cunningly devised fables when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Think about that for a minute. We are reading the writings of someone who was an eyewitness on the Mount of Transfiguration when Jesus was transfigured before them in great glory, appearing with Moses and Elijah. Verse 17, For he, that's speaking of Jesus, received from God the Father honor and glory when the voice came to him from the majestic glory. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And that is found in Matthew chapter 17, verse 5, Mark chapter 9, verse 7, and Luke chapter 9, verse 35. Verse 18, We heard this voice come out of heaven when we were with him on the holy mountain. Again, talking about the Mount of Transfiguration. Verse 19, we have the more sure word of prophecy, and you do well that you heed to it as a lamp shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of private interpretation. For no prophecy ever came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke, being moved by the Holy Spirit. One thing we got to realize here is when Peter or Paul or anybody like that in the New Testament is talking about Scripture, they're not talking about their own letters. They're talking about what was considered Scripture in their day, the Tanakh. Until next time, seek him with all your heart and you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.